Ron Atkinson is a legend in the world of football. After seven years away from club management, he's back in a new role as a football troubleshooter. Four major trophies may prove there's more to him than champagne and suntans, but now Sky One has issued him with his biggest challenge yet. Does Big Ron still have what it takes to guide lower league clubs to success? We've sent him to second division Peterborough United to find out. Coming up, following Steve Bleasdale's shock resignation, the heat is on for Ron and Barry. With just two games remaining, can the posh still make the playoffs? Ron's long-awaited golf day proves a big hit. And a useful money spinner. 1,500 the bits at the back. 1,750 we've got. And once the dust has settled on Peterborough's season, we get the complete lowdown on Ron's troubleshooting experiment. Ron was tremendous for this football club and, and, and its survival, really. Yeah, it's nice to meet a man of his calibre and he's been good towards me and to the rest of the team, I think. I seen his house on the telly the other day. You don't get a house like that for being a mug. I resign, fellas. Good luck, everyone. See you later. Last week, manager Steve Bleasdale dropped the ultimate bombshell. Well, he walked out of his job just an hour before kickoff against Macclesfield. He's, he says he's, he's gone. left, yeah, he's because, left. Yeah, he's because left. Christ picked the team. Even Big Ron, who's been around the football block a few times, was left stunned. There you go. I thought I'd seen everything in football. But the drama didn't stop there. In Steve's absence, club owner Barry Fry picked up the managerial reins. And Danny Crow came up with a winner with the last kick of the game. Oh! That means things couldn't be tighter in the table. The Porsche are level with Lincoln on points and goal difference. Only fewer goals scored is keeping them out of the playoffs. Promotion will give hard up Peterborough a massive financial boost. So with just two games to go, Barry's praying Ron can help him overcome the chaos and give the team one final push. It's Monday. Big Ron is on his way to Peterborough to deal with the aftermath of Steve's shock resignation. I certainly haven't seen anything quite as dramatic as what happened last weekend. Because in all fairness, when he said, do you mind if I have a word about it? I actually thought he was going to talk something tactical. So I've just got another Thomas point us. And um, I resigned, fellas. I mean, all of a sudden, now an impulse is just going woof. Complete shock what happened ultimately, but it may be it's something you might have seen coming. I mean, I know, but Barry said to me since he said Friday was one of the worst days he's ever known in the game. There have been all sorts of things going on. There's something really fucking bad gone wrong. I mean, I've had four players Ooh. in that like, that really haven't got a clue. I just wanted to know what was going on. No one knows who's running the place, I don't know. <sighs> Friday afternoon, important game on the Saturday. You know, a must win game. And all of a sudden he's got a uh, discontented player with gripes at situ the situation as it existed. And uh, I think then that was the moment started to make Steve's situation look a bit untenable. Meanwhile, at Peterborough's London Road headquarters, the press are clamouring for the latest scoop. But Barry's not playing ball. Jonathan Park just wants one question for me. No, I'm too busy. I know people can't just turn up and not, you know, fucking hard luck, I'm busy. Eventually, he agrees to give his side of the story to a local TV crew. Barry, can you tell me what's going to happen for the, the next couple of games? Yeah, I'm in charge. Simple as that. And what happens at the weekend? I went in the dressing room about 25 to uh, 2, told the lads the team, told them why, told them everything, blah, blah, blah. Then Steve just said, um, right lads, I'm resigning and I'm going. Good luck, hope you win today. And with that, he walked out, which absolutely bowled me over. 
then he texts me um, at half two to say sorry and uh, after the game he sent me another text to say great result, great win and then going home he phoned me up to say that he was fetching the car back Monday and it was sorry. that's all I know, I haven't spoke to him for, since Saturday night. Steve has been speaking to a local radio station though. Um, I'm the, I was the manager. I was told to be put in charge till the end of the season. And then I come in and find that, that, that Barry said he was picking a side. Well, that's fine because Barry owns the club. Basically, I just thought that, um, I just don't know, but just in my own mind, it was a little bit undermining for me. And, and I just made a decision. I've really thought I've done well. I think I should have been bloody manager of the month, but um, I did uh, the best I could. And uh, I hope to go on and do it, whatever happens to me. It's all about the club and the fans. But since then, it seems he's changed his tune. There are rumours of legal action from Steve, who's claiming he only quit as manager and wants to stay on as first team coach. If you resign, you resign. I mean, my conversations with him is resign full stop and he's going, he's fetching his car back. I didn't need this at all. Ron knows his old pal's now relying on him more than ever. And while Barry deals with management headaches, the big man takes full charge of training. Before now, our troubleshooter tried to avoid undermining manager Steve Bleasdale, keeping his distance and offering yeah, advice. Steve, I think they're capable of playing high tempo, one, two touch, progressive passing. But the rookie boss often chose not to act upon it. It's no surprise Ron became increasingly frustrated as he witnessed the clubs fall into utter chaos. If I have to have a fucking fight here, I'll fucking have one this morning. Oh, what are you saying? What are you saying, lads? Off you go, go away! Fucking idiot. Now, at last, he can get to grips with the players and refocus them on promotion. Jack, it was a bit heavy. I got a load of golf balls in the pocket. It's time to crack the whip and lick them into shape for their crunch game against Lake Norient. And his first target is young Danny Crow. Hey, where are you fucking going? Go and get the post over there. Nice slow walk. Come on, Dan, chop, chop. Walk fast. Amble quickly. Hey, Ron, here you go. Just, just walk them to here. Go and put them there. Put, bring them here. Good lad. Here's your next object, come on. Walk in a straight line, laying them down at every 10 metres. As the players are coming to the end of a long and demanding season, Ron feels a short, sharp match session will revive their flagging spirits. Just a little raz, free touch, nice and sharp. Get your touch right. Nice and busy, you can be busy and bright. Yellows are playing that way. Now, now that means, Lloyd, you're playing that way. <laughs> All right, you're in, you're off. Swing. Nice and sharp, nice and sharp. Well done. Oh, little rat, pop, pop, pop. Can you play? Do it, do it. You must have been a fucking big star at Doncaster, you. Let's, let's give it to him. When he gets to his age, he needs everything he can get. <laughs> Soon, Ron's passion and enthusiasm are starting to rub off on the players. Careful, lads, careful. It ain't Vietnam. Play on! Oh. You're having a laugh, aren't you? Come on. Right on, come on. Referees give bad decisions sometimes. You know, game kill Lloyd. I didn't even see what happened to me. <laughs> okay, that's it. When he calls time, they're begging for more. I keep it going for hours, mate. Extra time. Good ball. He's a very organised guy, and he's um, he's a great motivator. And obviously, he knows the game inside out. Now, you know, I mean. I had him at West Brom when I was a player and, um, well, he was, he was the best manager I ever played and when I was a player, because his motivation and man management is, is second to none. A lot of things he says make sense, you know. Just because he hasn't been in the game for a bit. You don't lose it, do you? It. No, not at all. Everyone's really looking forward to the next couple of games and hopefully getting the results that we need. Back at the club, Barry's waiting for Steve to drop by and return Peterborough's company car. 
At last, the owner will be able to tackle the controversial resignation, along with executive director Bob Sims. This is going to get messy, I think. Yep. I think the walking out on the team an hour before it oh. to play constitutes gross misconduct. Well, I, I think they wouldn't get an argument from anybody with that one. Mm. The fact that he left the building in the manner he did just constitutes that, I'm afraid. Steve turns up, and he's brought his wife, Karen, for moral support. Nobody can fold your passion, your commitment, your dedication to your job. I tried to support you all I could. Now, I've got to, I've got to tell you, everybody feels really let down because no way in a million years did anybody think you'd do what you do Saturday. I tell you what, when you packed up in the dressing room, I tell you what, my, bolli my bollocks fell out. I couldn't, couldn't believe it because we had a it. thing and you said, I'm, I, I'll do anything. I've got I two, I said to you, you've got a two-year oh. contract left, no matter what. And to be perfectly honest, the past week and a half, it was coming from everywhere, you know. I had Andy telling me things and Tony and then Ron kept chipping and ringing me every night. You, you're not a quitter. You, 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 you'd fight the fucking Scottish army and the German army for cut. You, you know what I mean? It, and it just absolutely bowled us all over. Let me tell you the truth, what, what it was. Ron sat there, crossed his legs, and you said something. He went, well, Steve's all for us now. He went, well, I don't look his body language, Barry. I'm not sure about his body language. And that was fucking dummy, Baz. That did me in my brain. And then you rang me up and you said you was coming back, bringing the car back, and could I sort your month's money out, which I said, of course I fucking will. But now, the lawyers have been on, he's been on, and fucking, all of a sudden it's fucking World War Three and a fucking fight through the courts. I'm not like that, I'm, I just, I just got a wife and a big mortgage and I was stupid frigging doing it, because me and Karen said, I was, what did I do for But I made me decision, that was it, I don't know why. I don't know, it, it could have all been different. But it, it, it's fucking, it's gone now, we're fucked, mate. It's how we get out of it. I just need to save grace, Baz. I need to get a job because I'm skint and I sh shouldn't have done it, so... If you've got no job lined up, which you clearly haven't, no. you've fucked yourself, and I, I, and I don't want you fucked that, that much, mate. I, I really don't. Yeah, I'm cool, yeah. Steve, legally, because you've done what you've done, I mean, we owe you three weeks' money and it's cause it quits. You could... Um, object to that and do all sorts of things. Um, I, I would just sooner, um, as part of Mickably and me, give you X number of pounds, um, which I think is private and I shouldn't discuss it in front of cameras. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah. In the camera's absence, Barry, Bob, and Bleo thrash out severance terms, and afterwards, all parties seem reasonably satisfied. You happy with that? Brilliant. Sorry, Buzz. Good luck, mate. All right, no worries. Any time, ring me. Any time you want anything. Okay. Anything, mate. He's made a huge mistake, and you know he now realises that. But um, because of what's been said and done, it, as I explained, there's no really going back. You know, so it's um, it's a pity. Coming up, can Ron beat the odds again and get another priceless victory at high-flying Lake Norient? And the big names swing into town for Ron's inaugural golf day. Just like your career, Ron Club. <laughs>